Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time I'm going to be playing with the Invoked Wind Witch Artifact deck, or Eidolon Wind Witch Artifact, a deck that was decently popular in the OCG for a short amount of time, winning, in fact, I think placing both the top one and two spots of uh, some national like level championship in the OCG, if I remember correctly. It was quite a while back, though. And then ultimately the deck just kind of fell out of favor, uh, just because people figured out how to hard counter it, how to play around it. Um, and overall, the deck is very slow and grindy, and if you can shut it out, then that's honestly your your best game plan. But, playing against one of my Discord buddies, and he's playing his absolutely fucking horrendously insane kitchen sink deck, as he calls it, because it's literally everything. You th throw the kitchen sink at him. It's Burning Abyss, Zodiac, <laughs> Dark Lords, and as of the last time I talked to him, he's implemented Eidolons in it as well. And, like, it's actually, like... In most of the games we play, insanely consistent. He's got a 40 card version and a 60 card version. He's playing the 60 card version here. And like, it's actually just incredibly potent in terms of like the things that it does in most of the games that uh, that I play with him. Like the boards that it generates are absolutely ridiculous in some cases, like with Beatrice, Drantia, <laughs> and fucking Ixshell with like Dark Lord Falling from Grace or whatever the, whatever the Raigeki Break Dark Lord Trap is like set as an option. And it gets absolutely ridiculous sometimes what you what this deck actually is capable of doing. But so, I basically am playing a really slow and grindy deck, so I have to try and like capitalize on interactions and stuff. And since I max seed him turn one, I basically got a free shot to like do some things. And so I've gotten his uh, his Dark Lord Raigeki break from uh, from the graveyard, so it doesn't really have to be that big of an issue. Uh, it was kind of a weird activation point there. I guess he did, forgot that I could actually just activate the uh, the invocation fusion spell and then just banish a laster from grave but I mean regardless it's still fine because he still has his uh, his eggshell on board because he was able to discard the Dark Lord out of hand that protects it from being destroyed uh, which is definitely not something I was counting on but I've still got this big beater here that I'm just trying to ride to victory basically and I've got multiple elasters in hand I've got a glass bell which I can normal summon at any point and get ice bell and like try to mold plays that way and I've also got two very good traps down, uh, one of them being Torrential Tribute, which is actually really good. Now, I did actually not see this play coming. I didn't see this play coming at all, where he just goes Alter to bring back a dude, and then Tributes for Ixchel out of hand and makes Super Dora. I did not expect that at all. That came literally out of left field, and if I had been expecting that, then I definitely probably would have played my turn structure a little bit differently in terms of how it operated. Um, but from here... He uses Alec to just negate my thing, so it doesn't matter, it has no effect anyway. It was just, it was Alec went to Grave, so it had to activate on something. Um, and so from here, I've got to out this Super Dora in some way, and I draw Book of Moon, which is pretty good as a card that I could use to, like, advance my, uh, advance my game state. And I actually forget that Super Dora can target any card, so that, drawing that Book of Moon there was actually incredibly, like, reliant on me not just losing this game to being an absolute dirtbag shithead. Uh, because basically, he uses Super Dora targeting my uh, my uh, fusion in the uh, attack declaration and so I can't use a Laster's attack boost on it which is what I was planning on doing so I then use Book of Moon on the chain to put it face down so it stops the attack and its defense is 3300 it's a big wall so it does have the capability of just you know walling out the Super Dora so I'm not really feeling too much like I'm on a clock I've got more cards than him I've got a Sanctum down and a Torrential so those are both really good and his Super Dora now only has one material left on it so I can definitely just use the Sanctum for Moral Tack to basically make it to where that Super Dora has to be forced to protect itself um, going forward. But So I just make Caligula, um, whatever the uh, Dark One's name is, I think it's Caligula, <laughs> uh, something like that. It's basically just a Majesty's Fiend. It's more like a window than anything else just because it's trying to restrict actions to once per turn. It's, it's really cool how that's the Dark Fusion and its effect is literally like almost exactly the same in terms of what Windows effect on the game is. You can only special summon once and Caligula things is uh, your only one monster effect can be activated per turn. Uh, but so, he kills it. I basically just did it so I could recycle the Elaster to hand because I didn't want to give away information that I had two of them. Um, and I draw Wonder Wand, which is actually just really good as well. Um, so I'm just keep, I keep cycling my invocation in and out. Um, and doing the Wonder Wand play is great here. And it gets me into Ice Bell and Emptiness, which is pretty, pretty good. You know, Emptiness is a strong card, especially backing it up with things like beaters on the board. And so, now his Super Dora is out of materials, so I'm able to, you know, do anything that I want to it. And I decided to go for a Raijin here, because it just seems like the better option, especially since he's really low in life in terms of what he had before, because of the fact that he's been paying off Ix shells. and so summoning the Raijin here is actually just game. And so I caught that, and was able to summon it and actually just go for it, because being able to pump with a Laster over the Earth Fusion allows me to just kill the Super Dora outright, and then the Moral Talk 
that I summoned in the end phase of the previous turn is still on the board, so it's more damage. So, going into the next game, I'm going second, and I draw Max C again. As you can see, I just circle my mouse around it, because I'm just laughing. Um, and so I Max C him here, and at some point, I, yeah, I type a smiley face in the chat, just as a little taunt, because we're all friends here. And so, <laughs> I max see his barrage activation, and he just decides that he's just gonna absolutely fucking go for it, 100%. He's just gonna, he's gonna throw the kitchen sink at me, give me all these cards. And honestly, against a deck like mine, that's actually, I would say that's probably arguably correct. The only hand traps that I have in this deck outside of max C are ghost ogres, and so I'd have to draw those to disrupt plays, but then also, he's letting me draw all these cards, so that means I'm drawing artifacts that I can't use off Sanctum. I'm drawing more of my uh, Wind Witch engine, which means that I can't special summon it off Ice Bell. As you can see, I've got two Glass Bells in my hand and Ice Bell already, so it's already like really, really, really bad for me drawing another Ice Bell there. And also, like because my deck is very anti-meta, like oriented, it's very slow and it's very like grindy in terms of how it tries to handle its play interactions. It's it's very much a deck that even if you give it all these cards, its ceiling is really low, especially with the restriction that Ice Bell puts on the turn. Like if you special Ice Bell in any way, you can only special summon level five or higher wins from the extra deck. So you can't like go into Macaba, Purgatorio, any of the big like hard hitting fusion plays. You can't do those. All you are locked into is Raijin, and that's like that's actually just a huge hindrance. And so yeah, I've got like. 13 cards or whatever, whatever how many cards are in my hand right now, and he's got a Beatrice and a Dryden and a Kagetsuchi with Whiptail in hand, which Whiptail can be put under Kagetsuchi, turning it into a non-destroyable, non-targeting removal card for anything. Like, these are all options that are available to him, and I've got all these cards in hand, but ultimately I'm not going to be able to do that much of, like, anything. I've got the Raigeki, which I can use to force out his uh, Dante Pilgrim and Beatrice, so that that's a lesser layer of protection like he has for himself. Like, I'm fine with the Beatrice triggering here, simply because of the fact that because of Beatrice triggering right now, I'm not going to have to deal with him being able to send Farfa at any given point in time. And so, and the Dryden obviously just goes away. So now, I know that he has the Whiptail in hand, and so I know I have to deal with that. And he uses da uh, the Dante to add back Seer so that he can continue his string, and I have no idea whether or not he actually has something like Farfa in his hand or not. But he has Dante Pilgrim, so if he does have Farfa, then he would definitely have the discard outlet for it. And so at this point, I'm contemplating what in the world I want to do here. I've got so many cards, and as soon as I use this Ice Bell, it restricts my turn structure so heavily. But I've got both Invocations in hand, so I don't want to summon the Alaster. I can definitely normal summon the Glass Bell this turn, and I've just got I've got way too many things to work with here, as well as a slew of good traps. I've got Dimensional Barrier and Emptiness and Torrential. And so it's just, it's a really good, like, set of cards that I've got access to, but as soon as I summon this Ice Bell, my overall ceiling is incredibly hindered. Like, I can make a Crystal Wing, yeah, good. But basically, like I said earlier, I'm only stuck into my Raijin play off of the off the Fusion Spell, off of Invocation. And that's a huge restriction, considering half of your extra deck is other fusions, and I could easily start banishing things like his Beatrice, his Dante, he's playing zoo cards, so he does have access to things like Digesto Emerald and stuff like that. And so I'm reading Clear Wing Fast Dragon to just remind myself what its effect is, and then ultimately decide to go for the Winter Bell. Um, but, so I could like, use Invocation to banish his Dante, his Beatrice, stuff like that out of his graveyard to summon Makaba, but I don't have that access anymore because Ice Bell just restricts you so heavily on what your turn structure is. Hence why this deck is naturally very slow and very grindy, very anti-meta-ish. Because of the fact that you are restricting yourself through your own playlines, meaning that you are going to be starting to set up things in a differing way. And so from here, he actually, he discards Seer of Dante Pilgrim, and it's a cost to discard off Dante Pilgrim, so I have no chance to negate it there. And so, he decides to try and Seer float back for Farfa, because my Crystal Wing is indestructible by card effect, and I just decide to absolutely just 100% uh, negate the Seer on the Farfa so that I don't have to deal with that. And so, I know that he has an Interrupted Kaiju Slumber in his grave at this point. I have not brought this up until now. Uh, he has an Interrupted Kaiju Slumber in his grave because off of his Kagetsuchi mills, he milled amazingly well. He milled Dark Lord spells and traps that he could use at any point um, once he gets, like, Dark Lords on board, and then he also milled an Interrupted Kaiju Slumber, which means that at the very beginning of his next turn, he gets to search for a Kaiju and put it over my Crystal Wing. This is something I definitely knew about ahead of time. And so I make double Raijin, uh, just because this seems like the better way to go about the situation. And I make an arguable misplay here. Um, I go to Raijin, Book of Moon, his monster, his uh, Kagetsuchi, and then he chains Whiptail. 
And in theory, I probably should have just used Raijin, the second one, to try and book a moon it again so the whip tail wouldn't resolve. And then the Kagetsuchi would be face down until damage step when I would attack it. But even then, I wouldn't be dealing with the Kagetsuchi for the turn because of the fact that it would be face up long enough for another attack to have to be declared on it. And then whip tail would go under it then. Uh, but so, because I know he has access to Interrupted Kaiju Slumber and he could very well already have a Kaiju in his hand, I just decided to go ahead and flip the emptiness straight up. I'm not afraid of losing any monsters. I've got two Raijins on the board outside of a board wipe like Regeki or trap removal like Twin Twister or something like that. I'm not really worried about anything going poorly in this situation because of the fact that I could just, you know, use Raijin on the Kagetsuchi so the whip tail is basically going to be rendered irrelevant. Um, multiple different things. Uh, now, the whip tail could be negated by Crystal Wing and damage step, uh, but ultimately it's still going to be leaving me with the Kagetsuchi, so I'd rather just I'd rather just deal with it in my own time, and so I just decided to slow roll this game. I'm winning on life, I'm winning on cards, um, and like if he has something like Twin Twister for my uh, for two of my sets, because I have a Scythe face down as one of those sets, I've also got a Twin Twister face down, so I was preparing myself mentally during this point uh, to where I'd be able to um, where I'd be able to, if he like Twin Twistered my Scythe and another card that wasn't Emptiness, I could then use my Twin Twister on my Scythe and my Emptiness so that it would force the emptiness off the board so a side could come back and lock him out of the extra deck. <laughs> like, these are all strategies that are running through my mind at this point. And so, I attack his Kagetsuchi, and the whip tail gets detached. It doesn't matter because of the fact that if... Well, it actually does matter because he would have to protect it with it a uh, material, leaving whip tail under it, and then the whip tail would activate and damage step, and I'd be able to negate it with crystal wing, and then he would have to detach that whip tail or another material off the Kagetsuchi. So the Kagetsuchi would just die quicker, if he didn't detach the whip tail there, so very, very good like that he recognized that. I was actually really surprised that he recognized something like that as a play line when this was happening. Uh, but so, I'm just attacking with things. I know that if I had normal summoned a Laster here, it would have been game, but I didn't want to put anything weak on the board for things to be run over with emptiness. As you can see, I'm just perfectly happy with discarding duplicate cards of things that I don't need, like terraformings for uh, Reckless Magic Circle, or um, Magic Meltdown, I think its actual TCG name is. Like. I'm perfectly fine with this not being a problem <laughs> of just discarding cards that I don't need. And so he's banishing for his Interrupted Kaiju Slumber to deck thin. He summoned his Terra Top, got Takatomborg, and he's just showing me cards that he has at this point, and I think that the Surrender comes very shortly. Emptiness being really strong, because he needed some form of board wipe or something. And he even has searchable traps that he could have in the form of, like, um, you searching for the Dark Lord Raigeki break. Like, there's multiple outs that he could have had. He just unfortunately just did not get to them. And so, going second, again, going in game three. Don't open the maxi this time, so sucks to suck, I guess. So he normal summons Graf after alluring away a Farfa. Specials Alec, makes Dante, attaches Graf and Mills three, hits the Seer, <laughs> and a Skarm. <laughs> and I'm just like, whoa, let's calm down. So the Graf is going to summon one out of deck, and the Seer is going to special the Skarm back. So I'm just like, wow. Or excuse me, the Graf summons uh, the Skarm out of deck, and the Seer summons back the Graf. And then he also has Elemental Triangle, he has Zodiac Barrage, he has everything um, in terms of like being really, really good in terms of a play. And I was, I knew that double Dante, or like double rank threes would happen. I just didn't expect there to be the Barrage as well. I was expecting it to be a play line of like Dante, um, get a card off Graf, Special another BA from hand to make Invoker, or like have to like hold that BA card to make a Beatrice. But no, he just has all of it. <laughs> he just has tons of it. But so he just goes through the regular Zodiac play line, and my hand is alright for like answering a board, I guess. Um, well, not really for answering a board, but it's got a Laster, it's got Magic Meltdown, it's got Wonder Wand, so I can get some value there. And I've got double Artifact Sanctum, so it seems pretty good. It seems pretty decent. I believe he added another whip tail there in terms of uh, what he added. And then he makes Kagetsuchi here, milling cards, milling tour guide, and milling another interrupted kaiju slumber. So I know that he has kaiju access immediately at the start of his next turn. And then Skarm gets a search for Alec here. Uh, and he's got a Farfa banished and a Farfa in his grave. And now for turn, I draw a blank, I draw a dud, I draw a moral tech, which was really, really, really frustrating because I was making my play line in my head of, yeah, I'm going to. Normal. I'm gonna use an the Sanctum and flip and summon Moral Tech from deck, and I'm gonna use that as my disruption. But then I just casually draw the fucking Moral Tech, and it's just not something that I was uh, looking forward to in mind. But so Wonder Wanting away the Alistair, uh, the Dryden popped my uh, Magic Meltdown, 
and I just had the other copy of Elyster. Like that's that's what I wanted it to do. I wanted to bait the Dryden, so that's why I activated it. I'm not too worried about the field spells uh, effect on the board, the static effect, because usually you can just play around those anyway if you're the opponent. So not really something I'm too worried about. So I use Invocation to banish his rat from grave, so I don't have to deal with multiple Momorat situations and attack over the Dante that was left in attack mode. So I'm just like, hmm, interesante. Uh, this is just chilling in attack mode. I guess he was really like like considering putting Beatrice over, um, but then like when he milled the seer, it changed his playline greatly. At least I think that's what happened. Uh, but still, it being in attack mode was definitely a mistake. Uh, but so then I uh, shuffle back my invocation, get back my Elaster, and I set my moral attack, which is arguably incorrect because I have no way to pop it. Uh, and so like there's no real way for me to trigger that moral attack right now. And I could have kept it in my hand for something like to fuse with into Merkaba. I could have kept it in my hand as negation food for Merkaba. Like, there's so many different things I could do. I guess I just really got caught up by how intimidating it looks to, to literally just set five and say go. And, like, these cards are real. It's Artifact Sanctums and stuff like that. And so I shotgunned the Sanctum for a Scythe uh, so that he can't, like, start stepping up his uh, stuff into, like, Beatrice or into uh, another, like, Dryden or another Bullhorn to get searches and stuff like that. Because I've got a relatively good idea knowing what he has, you know, in his hands and stuff like that. And so... He uh, uses Dante detaching the graph, and the graph triggers. Doesn't really mill anything worthwhile. He mills some Dark Lord cards and just floats out a Skarm that dies. And so from here, the Kagetsuchi and the Dante are going to be the two things I have to deal with attacking wise, which I'm completely fine with. I'm literally trying to stall for time at this point. Uh, but so then he goes and special summons a big motherfucking Kaiju from his hand, to which I'm like, yes, I have to strike this. <laughs> I cannot. I cannot leave this one uh, <laughs> as, a, uh, as an outlier. I can't. I can't let this one slide. And so from here. He uh, turns his stuff to attack mode, normal summons the Whiptail, because it's just more damage that way, and then attacks with everything. He leaves the Dryden in defense mode, though, because even though he could squeeze 1,200 more damage out off of uh, off of the Dryden being able to attack with the Whiptail under it in this battle phase, it just doesn't seem too relevant, and it would also just be putting the Dryden into attack mode, uh, which means it would be a little bit like more detrimental as far as having a target on its head as soon as the pop gets baited. Um, then it would definitely just be a card that would just be at zero and would allow me to punch over it again. Uh, so he just leaves the Dryden in defense mode and not, not it decides not to go for the extra damage. But so, I normal summon my Elaster, get my search, uh, decide to go for Merkaba banishing uh, his Dante because he's got a Dante engrave. Go me, starting to banish his resources. <laughs> and then I just shuffle back my stuff because I do have a Scythe in hand which I've drawn. So now I've only got one artifact left in my deck and I've got one Sanctum set. So if I draw the other artifact, I'm going to be fucking hurting. Uh, but so, he goes and activate, he goes, uh, I attack with uh, the Whiptail into, I attack with my Merkaba into his Whiptail, if I can speak correctly, with diction. Um, and then he activates its effect to put it under the Drancia, under the Dryden. And so I decide not to negate the Whiptail, because now I can just attack the Dryden and negate that. And so it deals with the same sort of situation, where now... If I wanted to, I could replay the battle, which I decide to do, attacking the Kagetsuchi, and then flipping Dimensional Barrier, calling Exceeds to negate its continuous effect, and now from here is the point where I'm just really feeling like I'm in, in the clear as far as, uh, as far as things go, and I decide not to discard my Elaster because the Merkaba would not be a negation on the board in any way, shape, or form, because I would have no cards in hand which is why it's arguably incorrect that I set the Moral Attack. I could have definitely had that in hand, but also if I discard the Elaster, I have to draw another Elaster or Invocation to start my play string going, whereas keeping the Elaster is almost non-destructible by my opponent at this point, to where I'm going to consist consistently get fusions every single turn. Uh, so I'm not too worried about it. But so I decided not to shotgun the Sanctum here, because I was like, surely he'll do something like, uh, like, normal, like special summon other BAs and try to go into the extra deck. Uh, but no, he actually just goes straight for Beatrice. I'm just like, okay, we'll deal with this uh, in our own way. And so I just decide to go and use a Sanctum as a chump blocker. I don't really care about it too, too heavily. Now I'm down to just that lone moral tech. This this game has been incredibly grindy back and forth in terms of what's been going on. Uh, but so I use the Elaster that I kept in hand, get Invocation, use it, go for the uh, Merkaba. After he uses his Beatrice to detach Dante and send a card to Grave. And now I've drawn Emptiness for turn. And so here I'm at this point where I'm like, okay... Okay, I can use this emptiness to the biggest advantage that I can think of possibly. And so I used, I detached, I banished his uh, Dante, uh, but it's still triggered because, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro is coded under Japanese rule sets where in the TCG in America, 
that Dante would not be able to activate because it wouldn't have been in Graveyard long enough to register an activation. But here, it activates, so he gets to basically add a card back for free. And so at this point, I've got my Makaba on the board, and I set the emptiness. I'm like, alright, so I've got to play this emptiness the most skillfully that I can possibly think of. And so, he flip summons his Alec, it dies because of the Beatrice, he negates my Makaba with it. A very strong play. And so then from here, he goes to attack with Beatrice, suiciding into my Makaba, which is exactly what I wanted. I wanted him to think that he would be able to suicide the Beatrice, use an effect of the Beatrice, and then get Dante Pilgrim. That's what I wanted him to think, and so he just uses Beatrice to foolish something absolutely inconsequential. And so then, as soon as we go into the start of the battle step, I just use the Emptiness, and then in response to the Emptiness, discard my Laster, leaving the Merkaba on the board at 3500. The Emptiness is active, so he cannot get his Beatrice float. And so at this point, I'm like, got him! I got him! I got him, man! <laughs> He's not gonna come back! Uh, I've got Torrential alongside Emptiness, alongside just this huge body that he can't get over. And now I'm just going to draw cards that I can use as negates. And so, I draw the Elaster and I decide to keep it in hand. Again, don't wanna t I don't want to turn off the Emptiness right now, one. And two, there's no reason for me to feel forced. Like, I've got him on the clock now. I played that Emptiness the most skilled way I could possibly think of in the moment. And it was the perfect card to draw um, in that situation. And so from here, I'm like, alright, well, I can definitely do some things here. So I... Terraforming for the Magic Meltdown, activate it, search for the Elaster, which is the last copy in my deck. The Emptiness goes away, I can Normal Summon the Elaster, and I can use it to get my Invocation. And now here I actually just make a mistake. Um, I use the Invocation, not realizing that I am actually out of <laughs> Makapas, and I don't have access to a Raijin. So now all I can summon is the Dark One, which is, again, I don't remember its exact name, I think it's Caligula. Um, and uh, this thing prevents... Uh, multiple effects from being activated, so I guess it's okay because while it prevents me from killing him, because now I can only attack with my uh, Makaba and I can't attack with anything else because of the Dark Fusion's effect. Um, uh, Kaluga, that's its name. Um, Kaliga, but uh, it's I think Caligula was like its OCG name, but um, or its translated name. But still, like the <laughs> the fact that I summoned that, I gave him another turn, even though he would have already had another turn anyway. Uh, because I would have attacked with the Merkaba and then attacked with the Laster, but I just didn't do as much damage as I thought I would. Um, so he Kaijus over my Merkaba, and then Interrupted Kaiju slumbers the board. Uh, gives us really the wrong Kaijus, but it doesn't actually really matter in a sense, because if he had given me the smaller Kaiju, I just would have torrentialed the board. Um, and also, like, off his Zodiac Barrage, he activates Zodiac Barrage, and then realizes that there's no copies of Zodiac cards left in his deck, because I've banished his rat, and he has searched his whiptails, milled his whiptails, and stuff like that. And so at this point, Barrage is a dead card. So even if he had another card to summon here, I would just be able to Torrential. Even if he didn't, and if he left the big Kaiju on his side of the board, and then on mine, um, I had the smaller one, I could Normal Summon a Laster, get a Search, and then Torrential. And then I would be able to Invocation for Raijin, because now there is a Wind in his graveyard in the form of the Terra Top that I ran over last turn. So... It would have definitely changed a tiny bit of technical play had the Kaijus been put on the right side of the field, uh, but ultimately it just doesn't end up uh, mattering, per se, because I have ways to out it in multiple instances and also just force game through. So, on my turn, I just summon a Laster, get my Invocation, use it for Terra Top. He crashed his Gamma Seal and then summoned his big Kaiju from hand, the uh, the second copy of uh, Thunder King, so that he would like not have to deal with multiple, uh, or with me attacking over it and then attacking with more damage, um, essentially. But it doesn't matter, because I can go Raijin, and then Book of Moon it, and then its defense is low enough for Raijin to attack over, and then I just have game the other way. So, overall, just a very interesting set of games in terms of how they were played out, and uh, the things that happened. Like I said, this deck is very slow and very grindy, and so I don't know if it'll actually see too much success in the TCG, since it was really like a success of surprise factor in the OCG when it happened. And there are a lot of people that are really like hyped up for this deck. Um, and I can understand why. It's an incredibly refreshing deck to play. I loved playing these three games. It was frustrating to draw cards, but also to have to think about these situations to get out of because it's such a slow-paced, grindy deck. It's a refreshing aspect that I honestly have missed. Every time I step away from it, I always get really, really surprised when I find a deck that makes me feel like I'm grinding through resources like that again. Uh, so that's, that's also another reason why I just like Zodiacs, because it's just a faster grind deck, essentially. But anyway, that's enough of that. 
As always, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. Links are in the description of my Facebook page if you want to add me on that, connect with me, chat with me, whatever, all that sort of nonsense. As well as a link to my Patreon page if you want to support me directly and also get in on a monthly giveaway at the end of this month for a box of Raging Tempest. It's a great way to support me. It's a great way to possibly win some free stuff, and it just helps out a ton to make uh, future content for this channel better. So if you want to do so and go support me, definitely go check out that as well as the reward tiers. That's how you also get access to my Discord server if you want to get to that reward tier as well. So a few people have already done that, and they're awesome for it, and they're honestly the most awesome people I've had to talk to in a long time. But anyway, other than that, thanks for watching. As I've already said, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below on the deck and the games and all that sort of nonsense. Anything you think that I should improve on or anything you'd like to see on the on the channel, definitely let me know, and I would try my best to get that as an option to be done. But other than that, thanks for your time. As usual, thanks for watching, as I've already said, and take care, guys. I'll see you in the next video.